Okay, I'm going to call a meeting to order. Uh, the first item that we have to start with is a public hearing. I'll read the notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the Town Board of Town of Cornwall will hold a public hearing on the 11th day of July 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall 183 Main Street, Cornwall, New York, on a proposed local law entitled a Local Law to Amend Town Code Chapter 125 entitled Subdivision of Land to repeal and revise certain portions of Chapter 125. The local law would amend Town Code Chapter 125 by repealing 125-5 subdivisions M, N, and O in their entirety and by enacting provisions set forth in the local law to require that performance security be provided to the town by a deposit of funds or an irrevocable letter of credit. A copy of the proposed local law is on file in the Office of the Town Clerk and available for inspection by interested persons during Town Clerk's business hours. Town Board will at the above date, time, and place hear all persons interested in the subject matter hereof. Persons may appear in person or by agent. All written communications addressed to the Board must be received by the Board at or prior to the public hearing by order of the Town Board, Town of Cornwall, or not a McGee Town Clerk. This is uh, just in reference to uh, on the uh, security. What uh, we our intent is to uh, no longer accept bonds, performance bonds. And that it's uh, why we would go to strictly uh, deposit of funds or an irrevocable letter of credit. I'm going to declare the public hearing open. Any wishes, anyone wishing to speak for or against this proposed local law? Okay. Anyone wishing to speak? Hearing no one, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Uh, I have a quick question. Sure. On uh, item O. Does that change, I guess, I guess this is just either, uh, does that change the, um, the planning board's capacity to uh, have a final opinion on the, uh, on whoever the construction or the developer is uh, to, uh, to, to have a final approval of the improvement that was made? Uh, it's not supposed to impact the planning board at all. Uh, o says upon completion of all the required public improvements pup, uh, or posting of the required performance, so that's putting in a roadway, putting in water, whatever it is, or posting security for it. Um, and notation to that effect upon the plat by the planning board, such plat shall be deemed to have final approval of the planning board and shall be signed by the planning board chairman. In other words, the planning board approves the, the subdivision plan. You can't put in the public improvements until there's approval of it. But there are gonna be conditions on your planning board's approval of the subdivision plan, one of which would be, of course, either construction of the uh, public improvements, building the road, um, or posting a bond for it. So the planning board will have voted, decided that this is the way they want the subdivision to be, then they have to, the, the developer has to either build the improvements, the roadway, or post a bond saying it will be built later on. And it is only after either that road is built or that bond is posted that the planning board chairman can sign the plan. That, that's all that's saying. Okay, great. Okay. The motion is second. Roll call. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Uh, Russell? Yes. Mr. Ardassi? Yes. Motion is carried. Close the public hearing. I'm going to ask you to uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and also stand for a moment of silence <coughs> as we give thought to uh, the tragic loss of lives that's occurred over the past week in our, in our nation. and hope that uh, peaceful times lie ahead for all our citizens. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have approval of minutes, June 6th, special meeting, June 13th, regular meeting, 
June 23rd, a good opening, a special meeting. June 29th, a special meeting. Is there a motion on the minutes? Second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment, agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda items this evening? Uh, yeah. Yes. Sir. Uh, I'm Hunter Schlesinger. I'm a locations manager. I film, uh, it's a low budget feature film shooting uh, in and around the Hudson Valley in the month of August. Uh, we are in the process of uh, getting approval to shoot at uh, St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital and uh, just asking for the possibility of waiving the fees from the town as we uh, will not be needing any assistance and all of the filming will take place on private property at the hospital. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment? Okay, before I get into the agenda, I just want a couple things I want to uh, express uh, appreciation for uh, town operations on 4th of July. First of all, the single stream recycling, I really want to commend our staff. Uh, at our last regular meeting, it had been in place for about a week, and now it's been uh, a month, and it's been very successful and very well received. And uh, residents are very happy with it, and we're very pleased that our staff was able to put that plan together and implement it the way that they did. So uh, that was very, uh, very good. Sure. Here's your fancy information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we did. We promoted it well, and it was well received. The other is the, the 4th of July. I um, want to thank, uh, again, the, the staff, uh, police department, buildings and grounds, highway. Um, and the uh, 4th of July committee for, again, the great event that uh, is put on for the town, probably the attendance are probably around the usual 10,000 people that we get, and uh, it really was a great, great event. And two days prior to that, we did have the dedication of the uh, Sands Ring uh, homestead and the reopening of it, uh, which we were very pleased to, uh, to be able to do. Um, the building looks beautiful inside and out, and uh, the Friends of the Sands Ring held an open house from 11 to uh, 1 on 4th of July, and we had easily had between 200 and 300 people come through the homestead uh, in that period of time. So it was very exciting, and uh, it, it's a great historic uh, monument, if you will, right here in the center of town. So we're hoping to, to build on that uh, going forward with programs and other activities. So. It, it's really been a great, uh, a great several weeks for the for the town. Item number one is a resolution on the secret law for the local law. We had the public hearing on this evening, performance security. Whereas the town board has considered the adoption of a local law entitled Local Law to Amend Town Code Chapter 125, entitled Subdivision of Land, to repeal and revise certain portions of Chapter 125. And whereas this is an action subject to secra, Whereas the town board as a sole involved agency assumes lead agency status and as such has caused to be prepared a short environmental assessment form. And whereas due notice, following due notice the town board has conducted a public hearing on the proposed local law and heard all persons interested in the subject matter thereof. Now therefore be resolved as follows. One, that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign the EAF. And two, after considering all the information presented to it, including the EAF, the town board determines that the adoption of this local law is an unlisted action and adopts the negative declaration attached here too. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. The motion is carried. Second resolution is uh, for adoption of the proposed local law. Whereas the town board has considered the adoption of a local law entitled a local law to amend ta town code chapter 125 entitled subdivision of land to repeal and revise certain portions of chapter 125. And whereas following due notice the town board held a public hearing on the proposed local law now therefore be it resolved as follows that the town board does hereby adopt the above local law which said local law shall be effective upon publication posting and filing in the office of the secretary of state in Albany. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ms. Bond? Yes. 
Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion's carried. We have a, uh, a proposal before us on the Eagle Scout project. Uh, I don't see the Eagle, the future Eagle Scout here this evening. Uh, but I, uh, I met with the, uh, the Scout and uh, the Commander of the Legion. Uh, the Scout project is proposed to be a uh, lighting, a low level lighting for the uh, Medal of Honor Memorial. Uh, he's been working with an electrician and uh, I've discussed the project with the electrician. So uh, the Scout project is not to install electrical but to do all the, the preparation work to, uh, to get the project uh, uh, up and, and running. So. He's not here tonight to make his uh, presentation, but what I'd like to do is just have the board authorize the project uh, mm -hmm. so that uh, he may be on the timeline based on his Eagle Scout performance. I know he was away uh, in the past week or so, I believe, so whether that's why he's not here this evening. But I'd like the board just to uh, approve the project, and uh, if it's not sorted or completed by our next town board meeting, I'll have the Scout come and make the presentation, which is always a good experience for someone seeking Eagle Scout. Um, so I'll just ask a motion to uh, authorize the uh, moving forward with the lighting of the Medal of Honor Memorial proposal. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, will the electrician be ready to go as soon as he's done the trenches and all that? Yes, the electrician is, is talking to Central Hudson to get whatever paperwork has to be filed, and uh, so It'll, it'll and obviously all certified and everything for it. And who's the scout? The scout is uh, Stephen Costello. And okay. you saw everything. You, you saw the whole thing. Saw so everything. Saw the plan. Um, he uh, he gave a description of it. He actually had a nice presentation put together for oh, okay. it, and I accepted a few of the pages, but. Um, it, it should be improved because we, we put uh, the temporary solar lighting on the flagpole, mm -hmm. so this will also light up the flagpole on a permanent permanent basis. Okay, the move a second, uh, roll call. Ms. Buck? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. And Mr. Randazzo? Yes, motion's carried. Mm -hmm. Next item is on order of visual uh, permit request for a waiver. We just heard from Hunter. Uh, with the request that he made to the uh, to the board, uh, this is for the uh, audiovisual production at the St. Luke's uh, Cornwall Hospital, Cornwall campus. And Steve, if, is it correct? I mean, based on the fact that you're all on private property, not involving the town, it, it doesn't require actually require the permit. Oh, uh, well, uh, he has to apply for the permit. You can waive the fees. That's 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 what the uh, what the law says. Okay. I, I would, you know, I mean, we got the permit, and I don't think there are any any uh, any, any fees, but I think it's irrelevant. I, I think we have the application, um, so just so we can give the approval on it. But I think we have to double check some of that, to be honest with you, because I, I, I do believe that if it is all on private property, that um, I don't think they even have to apply to the town if there's nothing on the public right of them. But you're the attorney. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to you. I appreciate that. <laughs> if you're concerned about, it, you can waive the fees subject to them submitting any papers that they might need to, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, and, and I think the theory behind that, when we did the local work, if I'm not mistaken, was the fact that if we had a business, for example, that wanted to shoot a commercial on their premises, um, it doesn't really involve the town. That's why we felt that you know we, we shouldn't be involved, but. Let's approve the uh, the application, and uh, based on the current information, waive the fees, which may not be due anyway. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Well, you always have to provide the insurance. That's I mean. Well, no, it, we would not be involved. So, with the application, it's not going to. We basically said, if you're doing it on private property, it's not involving the town. It's not something that the town should be really regulating in that sense. So, all right. Is there a motion to that effect? You know what the yes. effect is? Yes, I know the effect. <laughs> okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion? We're waiving the fee. Yes. Waiving. Yes, if there are any fees due. Okay. Subject to the attorney reviewing the, the, the law. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Bond? 
Yes. Mr. Somerville. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. Rendazzi. Yes. Motion is carried. Hmm. I have a uh, letter from McGovey Hazard Netzel regarding the Tanaquamo MS4 program annual report. It's your Supervisor Daz, the office submitted the MS4 annual report to New York State DEC on behalf of the town on Cornwall on 31 May 2016 to meet the 1 June 2016 deadline. In order to address minimum control measurement one, public education outreach, please have the annual report posted on the town's website. Electronic version of the report has been included, a compact disc accompanying the letter. If you have any questions or need help in the process, please phone our office. Um, that it is on the website, and we're just going to note this for the file that the report has been submitted. <coughs> Next item is uh, we have an application before us for a public event permit. It's the Rotary Club of West Point Highland Falls. It's the fourth annual Storm King run. It just runs a short distance into uh, Cornwall off of uh, 218. They don't require, uh, let's see, formal police, fire departments are notified of the event, but they don't indicate they need any real assistance with it. Um, I think they're going to have to deal with the state actually on the closing of 218. So, is there a motion to uh, approve the uh, request for the event? The insurance will be provided. So, is there a second? Second. Do we have a date? Discussion? Um, August 21. August 21, 0700 to 1130. That's a Sunday. Okay, is there a second? We get a second. 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 Roll call. Ms. Bunt? <coughs> yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Rendazzi? Yes. Motion is carried. Just to uh, note for the record, we have received the uh, tentative equalization rate for the town. New York State Department of uh, Taxation Finance Office of Real Property Services, and the tentative equalization rate is 73.52%. As a follow-up to the uh, Beaver Dam Lake Water Corporation uh, issue that the board has discussed in the past, we did write to the uh, Public Service Commission and ask that they extend the period for public comment uh, because a lot of the details came out with this proposed uh, sale of the private sale of the private water corporation to another private company and uh, the issues came up about uh, points of access to Beaver Dam Lake so we felt that would give the residents an opportunity to research more and to be able to comment on it. So the PSC has extended the uh, comment period until September 8th. Along with our recycling program, I asked uh, our superintendent of highways to obtain a, a price for uh, recycling containers. Um, not that we're going to purchase them and distribute them, which we did when the program was first set up, I think in 1989, we bought containers. But what, what I uh, would like to do is have the board authorize, uh, based on the two proposals that they have, uh, the purchase of just 45 containers, it's a 32-gallon container that's meant for recycling, sort of a tall container. It's easier for the residents, easier for uh, our sanitation workers to handle. Uh, just to make them available, that if residents want to come in and buy them from the town at no profit, just whatever it has cost us to purchase them, we'll make them available to uh, the residents that would like to do that. So I have two quotes. One is from TMF Corporation, the 32-gallon uh, container is $15.20 each and there's another proposal from CEJJ Inc and their price for the 32 gallon uh, container is $18.25. These are no lids which we really don't want the lids. They're drilled with holes in the bottom so the water drains out if it's sitting out there in the rainy weather. So just like the authorization from the board to uh, purchase the 45 containers from TMF Corporation at $15.20. Uh, plus shipping of $190.60 for a total of $874.60 for the advance. So we'll add in whatever the total price is, and that's what we'll charge. Will be available here at 10 
What I was thinking is it's easier because for highway to handle the money is a little difficult. Where I've seen this in other places, usually the village clerk or town clerk has some containers there and just sells them to the public and collects the money. So we're not going to have a, a great influx of, of people looking to buy them. But it is an option that the residents will have. Because uh, we do get calls occasionally about the containers and all. So this is something for a few dollars they can have something that's designed for, for recycling. So they'll be here now that I'm They'll be here. What's the cost of the resident? Well, eight, $874.60 divided by 45. All right. <laughs> we may round it off so it's an even number. 50 cents to a dollar, but we're not looking to make any money. I just make it to be. Pardon? Probably 16 and change. Yeah. Okay. There's a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? This one? Yes, Mr. Summer Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Rantazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Resolution on the uh, farmer's market. Uh, request has come from the farmer's market manager uh, that we offer. Um, the vendor is a 10% discount for payment of fees in full for the season. So apparently there was some inquiries from some of the vendors. Some would be uh, happy to do that. So I have a resolution. Whereas the farmer's market regulations previously required vendors to pay a rent fee for the town in the amount of $25 per week. Whereas the town board wishes to make provisions for payment in full of fees for a 10% discount. They therefore be resolved as follows. Town board hereby approves and adopts the above change to the farmer's market rules and regulations, which shall be effective as of July 1st, 2016, and authorize the market manager to notify all interested vendors of the change. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Um, I just want to make sure that it's non refundable. If there's a rain date right. or anything, they don't get the money. We, we operate rain or shine. Okay. Yeah, that's it. So. Okay. Roll call. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, an issue has, has come to the, uh, the town's attention regarding a uh, proposal uh, that's uh, being made by the uh, Coast Guard. And uh, it's about moorings or anchoring of uh, barges and uh, basically uh, commercial tankers along the Hudson. Um, they're looking at 10 different sites and uh, it does raise a, a number of questions, uh, you know, in terms of uh, issues with safety and the environment. So I have a resolution from the board uh, requesting uh, that basically they hold a public hearing to uh, give the residents an opportunity to comment on their uh, proposal. Whereas according to the Coast Guard website, the Maritime Association of the Port of New York, New Jersey Tug and Barge Committee, the Hudson River Port Pilots Association, the American Waterways Operators wish to establish 10 anchorage locations along the Hudson River that commercial tankers and tugboats would use as rest stops. Whereas these rest stops are and may be used by large commercial vessels, ships taking oil back and forth to Albany and are or may be used long-term mooring points. Whereas said proposal would create health and safety, environmental and economic problems for Hudson River communities, such as the town of Cornwall, and that therefore be resolved as follows. Town board author hereby authorizes supervisor to request the Coast Guard and or other appropriate authorities to hold a public hearing before any further action is taken or decisions made. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Yes. Motion is carried. Next item is on the Economic Development Advisory Committee uh, mission statement. Uh, the board has been discussing this over the past uh, couple of months. We met last week at our work session uh, with an updated draft provided by uh, Councilman Summerfield. And uh, I think they're. they're uh, we got the latest draft, I think, yesterday afternoon to, uh, with, with some of the changes that uh, the board had requested last week. So, Michael, if you can make any comments on it. We uh, removed all of the language uh, that we discussed at the work session. Um, it's an additional minor uh, change in the meetings uh, description. Um, we tried to make it as plain and simple as we could. 
pretty much mirrors the, uh, the conservation committee's um, Uh, <laughs> statement <laughs> for the bylaws. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the mission statement reads in, in a similar fashion, um, but uh, I think generally speaking, the document as it is is very much similar to the CAC, and uh, I hope everybody's pleased with it. We, we do have a couple of uh, changes we are going to make in the. Um, Conservation Advisory, minor changes, basically on me meetings of run as a result of redoing this. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll provide that with the uh, work session. Okay. So comments, thoughts? Uh, can we table this until we have it all sorted out and the attorney has a chance to review it? I think, Steve, you haven't had an opportunity to review the, the latest draft. I, I didn't get it until today. I, I think probably, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost you know, it's, it's pretty certainly, and it's just about final form. There might be some tinkering with the language, but I think we're very close. It would probably be a good idea to take that and pull the CAC mission statement too, and then next month just amend the CAC mission statement, approve this one, and then everybody's on the same page, and, and there's no issues. Yeah, that that kind of makes sense. So, motion table. Second. Second. All in favor. Opposed. Motion to table. Motion to table then will be brought up to work on it at our uh, work session. Under personnel uh, resignations, I have a letter from Kathy Elick. Uh, I've been honored to serve as appointed member of the Cornwall Conservation Advisory Committee for the past seven years. Over the past years, I've enjoyed seeing our committee participate with the community, help celebrate annual Arbor Days with tree plantings, Route 218 cleanup, new tree saplings for good trees, organized recycling and mass gatherings, and helped event planners. Unfortunately, we're moving away and not able to continue as a member. Please accept this letter of resignation as uh, a member of the committee. So I'd like to entertain a motion to accept uh, Kathy's letter of resignation with regrets because she, we know that she's worked very hard on, on the pro projects. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? second? Roll call. Ms. Bunk? Ms. Mr. Summerfield? Yeah. Mr. Yes. Mr. Russell. Yes. Mr. Renzaski. Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, also, I have a memo from Chief Hazard regarding resignations. Attached for review, following resignations. Jeffrey Gold, part-time dispatcher. Joel Nye, part-time dispatcher. Nicole Baudet, part-time dispatcher. Kimberly DeSocio, full-time dispatcher. In a separate vote, uh, Kimberly is requesting that she be uh, retained as a part-time dispatcher. So I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the resignations as presented by the chief. So moved. Discussion. Discussion. Roll call. Uh, Ms. Buck? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. And Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Rizazza? Yes. Motion is carried. I'd like to entertain a motion to... Uh, I have a memo from Chief Hazard uh, regarding a part-time dispatcher. We respectfully request the town consider hiring John Galimas, part-time dispatcher at the prevailing rate of $16.47 per hour. Mr. Galimas has an extensive work history in customer service and communications in the private sector. So I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, appoint John Galimas and Kimberly DeSosu as uh, part-time dispatchers. Second. Second discussion. Roll call. Yes, Mr. Summerfield. Yes. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. Russell. Yes. And Mr. Martin. Yes. Motion is carried. Another memo from Chief Hazard uh, regarding part-time court attendant. Uh, Chief is recommending Harold Jones uh, for a position of court attendant. Mr. Jones is very qualified. He's a New York State Corrections Officer for over 30 years and has strong ties to the area. Is there a motion to accept the Chief's recommendation and appoint Harold Jones? Court attendant. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Hardass? Yes. Motion is carried. Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, we have two vacancies that we've interviewed for to fill. And uh, I would. Uh, 
entertain a motion. We had uh, we had several applicants, um, and I think the names to be presented tonight are Deanna Walters and Cheryl Lee, uh, both uh, appointments to uh, to the planning board. Uh, and with that, if the board is in agreement, I would recommend that Deanna Walters be um, appointed to fill uh, Ted Tobias's term, unexpired term, and that Cheryl Lee be appointed to uh, appoint Bill Lee's uh, unexpired term. Is there a motion to appoint? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. <coughs> yes. Mr. Summer? Yes. yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. And Mr. Russell? Yes, motion is carried. That takes care of the agenda items, but before we get to committee reports, I, I do want to uh, address uh, uh, an issue that uh, was brought up uh, last month uh, by Councilman Summerfield, and not being critical of people thinking outside the box, I mean, that's, that's fine. You know, we, we all have that, that right and that opportunity. But unfortunately, um, What's been proposed on changing the name of the town of Cornwall to the town of Cornwall Hudson has created quite a stir among the residents uh, for various reasons. And uh, I think that uh, given so many factors that uh, it's certainly not something as a, uh, as a board member that I would consider pursuing. I've heard from a lot of residents over the past month um, and one of the concerns is that, like, is the town board really going to do this? Uh, are we going to wake up one morning and read in the paper that the name of the town has been changed? And I, I want to assure them that uh, if, in fact, any time in the future a name change in the community were to be proposed, it would not take just a stroke of the pen. There's an absolute process that would have to uh, occur. But I also have to say that you know, to change the name of the town of Cornwall that's been around for more than a couple hundred years is not something that anyone should take lightly. Um, and the idea of changing the name as a marketing tool, to me, is, you know, a non-starter. Um, there, there's a long and rich history that goes with the name of any community, and certainly in the town of Cornwall, we uh, have a tremendous history that for decades and generations and centuries, uh, people have been very proud of. Um, you can't just throw away that name that goes with that history. It's been built on by so many people. Um, and this is not something that should be taken as an issue that's going to divide new residents and longtime residents. I am third generation in Cornwall, but I can tell you that I've always uh, been very welcome to people who have moved into the community and in my 20 plus years of public service very open to uh, new residents looking forward to working with them uh, listening to their ideas and views because people come from different backgrounds and you know diverse thoughts and, and ideas and there's nothing wrong with that I mean they come in and we see a lot of people that move into a community and right away they get involved in groups and organizations they volunteer to do good things for the community so this should be, not be looked at as, uh, you know, the old versus the new. Um, Cornwall is a unique community in, in many ways. Uh, when you compare it with other towns in, in Orange County, um, you look at, for example, the town of New Windsor, town of Newburgh, uh, they, they have a lot of economic development. And because of the size and the nature of the community, uh, it's a much different setting than we have in Cornwall. In Cornwall, we're, we're limited not by small thinking, but we're limited by the fact that we are a smaller community in several ways. Uh, one of the things that has, and this topic has come up in terms of the community and economic growth and development and how do we move ahead and how do we keep things going. Um, when you look at Cornwall and, and how the geography, the topography of the land is. We really are locked between two mountains, the Storm King Mountain and Scunnymunk Mountain, which takes a lot of the land off the table for any kind of economic type development in terms of, of business development. And you look at other uh, areas of the town, 
and basically, I'm going to say 10 years ago, uh, when we did the comprehensive plan, the town sort of drove a stake in the ground that said, we are going to preserve the open space west of Route 32 and try to retain a, as much of that character of the rural part of the community as we can. So when you look at the other side, the east side of Route 32 to the Hudson River, we're, we're very limited. I, we have mostly residential. It's, it's certainly a large uh, commuter uh, community. And our opportunities for commercial development are really limited by all those factors. Uh, the board is taking steps so that we don't stagnate. You know, we have to be able to be uh, thinkers of into the future and, and try to do everything that we can to keep us a viable community. And I think the community over the years has done that very well because the underlying tone of all that is maintaining the character of Cornwall. That's why a lot of people have lived in Cornwall for many years and they stay in Cornwall. A lot of other people move to Cornwall because of the character of the community. And it's unique in, in many ways. And I think most people really recognize that. Um, I think we're, we're on to a good start with the uh, Economic Development uh, Committee by looking at the mission statement. We're not just looking for a committee in name, we're looking at a committee of thinkers who will be able to uh, work in an advisory capacity with the town board to bring ideas to the table that we can look at and, and see which ones uh, we can actually embrace and, and move forward with. Um, so I think the, the bottom line here, I just want to put from my standpoint uh, many people's minds at ease in our community that we are not looking to change the town of Cornwall, period. Um, there's been no indication from any large number of residents uh, that that's the desire. Uh, we have a great community here. It's known as the town of Cornwall and been known of the town as the town of Cornwall for over a couple of centuries. And that's what we want to build on. So uh, I just want to put that out there so that uh, the community understands that this is not a town board initiative. And uh, I certainly open it up for my uh, fellow board members to, to comment on. But I've heard from so many people over the past month that this is not something that we want to leave out there hanging. It was an idea that Michael had. Um, and we all have our opinions on it. So I'll open it up for any comment from board members. I too have heard from a lot of people out there. Um, it's petition time, so I've been out getting signatures, and that's one of the first things people say, are you changing the name of the town? Can you just do that? And um, I said, no, this was a one board member brought it to the board, and we can't do it that way anyway. You would have to know to be public hearing. So I tried to do it you know, individually, but I think it's a good idea to put it out there that I myself, I'm not supportive of changing the name of the town of Cornwall. I just, I mean, I don't see the village of Cornwall on Hudson economically thriving because they're the village of Cornwall on Hudson. So I don't know how the town of Cornwall on Hudson would change the economic growth of Cornwall. That's just me speaking. But that was my first thought when you introduced it. So um, I would like to express for the community that I have no desire to change the name of the town. We celebrate our history. We just get done celebrating the restoration of Sands Ring. Um, you mentioned Arch Hanley. At one time, much of Arch Hanley was actually part of Cornwall. And as late as the early part of the 1800s, the town of Highlands was part of the town of Cornwall. So to do away with the, you know, the town of Cornwall, change it to something else when we do is a great deal of our history. Right? Right. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we shouldn't be afraid to discuss things. You know, so it's, no. it, you know, I commend Michael for bringing an idea to the board. But that's what we need to be able to discuss things and the community should respect the fact that we want to put ideas out there, have a discussion whether we agree with them or not. But we should be uh, able to bring ideas to the board. But as the resident of the village, uh, I understand. Okay. Well, I okay. thought it was a great discussion, and uh, <laughs> I really love the idea. I think it has a lot of merit. Um, I recognized that it wasn't going to be embraced, 
Uh, however, I did also have great conversations with people that said, you know, this, this, uh, this is one way of advancing a lot more discussions about the town that the town needs to have with itself. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to present it to you all. And uh, I, I'd still like to work on it in the background. I'll, uh, I'll just pass along information as it comes up. It, it had nothing to do with the Economic Development Committee. It, it was a specific proposal for myself to begin a dialogue of looking toward the future. And I, I thought it was a, an excellent example of, of something that the town could do uh, inexpensively and with a great flourish. Shopping wrong. Shopping wrong. I thank you. I, I, and I will add to this that I know you said it may be an aha moment, but it, it turned out not to be. No. Some other people. You know, for some people it may be, but for other people it wasn't. But again, we respect your views, and uh, you know, we're going to move on from here. So, committee reports, uh, Councilwoman Hunt. Um, for the seniors, I have their calendar, their personal calendar, and status quo doing the things they do. We did meet with Valerie in that uh, work session. It seems like she is really trying to provide a lot of services for the seniors. Um, I think it's a good start for us to look at possibilities that maybe we could um, do some more. Um, so, but you know, the, she does the shopping, the hotsy totsies, they do their line dancing. They have a pretty full calendar, so um, you just have to get it out there, I guess, to people. It seems like it's a little lack of participation right now, maybe since well, that pro eating program yeah. changed that has impact the programs. But I am going to uh, uh, actually have Valerie provide more detailed information to the board on an ongoing basis so that we really can take a look at our, our senior rec program and you know sort of analyze it in a sense to see how we can grow it and reach more seniors uh, yeah, in any way we can. She comes to work at 7.30 and yeah. I didn't know, you know if the seniors need her at 7.30. No, I think, well that's why, I, I, you know, I, I'll be talking to Valerie this week okay. and uh, just to get more information from her so the board has more to look at. And like I said, the, the goal is to try to Maybe reach as many seniors. Yeah, I mean, there, we, we'll see there. once we know exactly how the programs are being run and how many people are involved, then we can decide, you know, if there's ways that we can, can, can grow it. And Kovac, uh, approximately 70 calls for the month. Other than that, there's been no progress on with the contract. Okay, so we will be on the Kovac part of it, we, we certainly will be, uh, again, contacting Kovac because we really haven't heard much from Kovac with the contract, but we, we can't let, you know, this, this whole thing just go on without some resolution and some long-term commitment. So if you would pass that on to your officers and, you know, like to have some communication from them. All right, we have a meeting tomorrow night, so. Okay, if you would, I appreciate that. Alan, anything further? No, I'm good. Councilman Summerfield. Um, CAC did not meet this month, uh, so I have nothing to report for them. And the uh, Economic Development Committee was meeting was concurrent with the special meeting last week, so uh, there's nothing to report there. Okay. Councilman Russell. Uh, came out to the sewer operations for Shore Road, routine maintenance. There was three responses to uh, troubles in different lines that were serviced. One was uh, unfounded. And then uh, as far as measurable parameters, all within, very important, within permit limits. And then for First Cliff, it was routine maintenance and also uh, all parameters were in uh, permit limits. For the police department, I have statistical reports for the month of uh, June. Calls for service, 803 motor vehicle accidents reported with 40. Uh, alarms, both residential and in business for 41. There were 23 ambulance requests, 18 uh, animal complaints, and 16 suspicious vehicles or persons, 40 house checks, and 21 assists of other agencies. I, I don't have a report from recreation. Okay. 
Yes. Track down that leak. Yeah, I think actually the good news is we think that we've cut down the water loss in half on a, on a daily basis by what we've done so far. So we're cautiously optimistic. Councilman McGinnis. Uh, the assessor's office uh, had a meeting last week with our consultants and other government officials and entities, and the schedule is set to have all of the data collected by the data collectors uh, with data entered, entered along with the sales uh, information entered by the middle of next month, which should uh, put us on schedule to uh, complete the assessment in the time frame that we had set. Highway Department, the past month, hazardous trees removed several locations. Uh, three columns for trees down, cleaned up in all the ways. It's been very windy. Uh, small drainage job, Garland Street, roadside mowing and weed eating. eating. Electronic day, town hall, handed out flyers for new single stream recycling program. Hatching in town, help sanitation department as usual. Uh, catch basin repairs, sweeping of streets, clean catch basins. Prepped and started the rain garden project at Town Hall. And uh, as you had mentioned before, all reports show that uh, the results of the single stream recycling have been very positive. Okay. That's all right. So, can I put the building? Oh, go ahead. Um, from the building department, permits issued 28, CCs issued 17, COs 5, on site inspection 73, complaints investigated 3. Fire inspections 10, board appearances 1, signs removed 5, permit fees 5,513, permit renewal fees 50, fees for municipal search 3,600, court fines assessed 300. Uh, planning board projects opened uh, 5, zoning board 2. I do want to uh, just report on two things. I did meet with uh, uh, Mark Etzel and a rep, uh, an architect they have in the Valley Housing Etzel, and uh, we went up and took a look at the uh, softball field. Um, and we're going to we discuss the possibility of, of access and we're making a short driveway up to the level area and put a couple of handicapped spots there and then make it accessible from there. So they're going to put together a sketch and, and a cost estimate. Uh, I don't think there's anything we're going to have to work on now because pretty much the season, I think, is, is over for uh, Little League. But uh, we'll get that information and we'll have it. But it looks like we may be able to do something that would accommodate. Then it would actually access the, I think it's the T-ball field as well as the uh, girls softball field. So we'll see. And we also took a uh, look at the uh, site for the proposed uh, historical uh, museum building that uh, we're considering. And uh, the engineers are going to put together some detail and maybe a general cost overview. Um, my emphasis to them was um, inexpensive, and we're really looking for square footage. We're not looking for, you know, a, a, a great building, but a good building that will house all the uh, historic treasures that we do have and make it accessible to the public, uh, but keeping the cost as low as we can and, and still providing the square footage that. Uh, you know, it could make it a, a visitor and a, a tourist attraction for the yeah, community. Footage in mind. Looking at it, possibly around 1,200 square feet, which is much bigger than the one room they have in the town hall currently. So that would be a plus. So they'll be getting back to us with that information. Okay, warrant number seven. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Rodnetsky? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment? Anyone wish to speak on it? Any? Carla? Mm -hmm. um, my name is Carla Castillo and I reside at 69 Hasbrook Avenue. Um, I wanted to comment on two things. Um, it's great. I think it's great that the town is uh, purchasing the recycling containers for, for uh, residents. Um, and I wanted to make a recommendation on that, that between the two choices, hopefully, um, one of them will be largely have recycled content, be made from recycled content. Um, it would be great if they were US made, um, and ideally the colors should be blue. That 
than the, um, the color that's being used traditionally now. Um, and then in terms of the new historic building, that's really exciting. And, um, and I, I hope that um, there will be a temperature controlled room so that all those lovely artifacts won't decay in our humidity. So Thank that's you. Great. Anyone else have a comment? Tony? I appreciate the comments that uh, Richard made, uh, Mr. Randazzo made it on the, for the town. It, his comments were spot on. That's one of the reasons when, a uh, long time ago, when I moved to Cornwall, why I decided to stay. I was visiting Majestic Weaving, the mill. I fell in love with the town. And I am 30, 35 years, 40 years, more than that. Anyway. What I came to speak about tonight is taxes. Uh, quite a um, lovely subject. I made, uh, I'm giving Mr. Randazzo a copy of some information, which uh, if the tax office would be so kind to make copies, I'd like to have all the board members have. And also, I believe Mr. Gabba, you have a copy because he's going to need his advice. One of my problem is, that I was, uh, I've been trying to correct problems that came about in 1989 to 19, when we had the Fergan report. And I have not been able to do so. We have been told for so many years, that's what, 30 years now, that that data was never used. Well, I'm in a situation now which Problems that arose then are still in the paperwork in the assessor's office today. During Mrs. Bunt administration, I was told to go to the Sky Hearing. I went to the Sky Hearing, and the then assessor, now Mr. Fiorentino, the assessor is no longer here. Because I believe the town did not renew his contract, commit the perjury. Recently, I found all the paperwork that I can prove that. At that time, I did not have it. And two months later, he changed the, the information in the assessor's office. And I did not want, I did ask uh, Mr. Randassa I wanted to have a meeting, but I thought it was a little bit unfair. I'm giving you all the paperwork. Incidentally, I gave that to the assessor to the review board. I want the board and Richard to have a chance to look at it. Also, please con consult with the Mr. Steve Gabba, because he was also involved at the very beginning when I was trying to get some information from the assessor's office through a FOIL, and I was denied, 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 and the flex office also was involved. But then, I don't want to make too much uh, information public because I think it would be unfair until you had a chance to look at it. And Mr. Gabba has a chance to review it because there's some legal questions in there. Okay, and Thanks. Richard, when you have time, when that is done, give me a call and um, we'll have a meeting. And so that you know, is getting a little bit contag contagious between the assessor's office and myself. I asked for a meeting with the assessor on June 4th, and they told me he was too busy. I thought, well, fine, not a problem. When we have a chance, give me a call. Today is, I believe, July the 11th. My phone has rung. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh. Okay. When the data entry is finished in the assessor's office, is that when the inventories go, go out to the property office? The, yeah, once the inventory is all put in, they, they'll generate data mailers, and the data mailers will go to all the property owners. So that, and that's an important part. Uh, don't know when. We're not sure because they may send part of the mailers out. They may do them in, in stages. As they complete areas of the data entry. But when I think they're talking at least when 50% of the data entry is done, they might do the first 50%. But on that point, we encourage the property owners to really take a look at these, the information on those data mailers when they get it, because 
if the information is not accurate, it certainly reduces the possibility of having an accurate uh, assessment or the best that we can do on it. So we encourage the residents to look at that. Okay, now I entertain a motion to uh, go into an executive session for a closed session with uh, the attorney to seek the advice of counsel. Second. second. Roll call. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Russell? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion is carried. We will not be taking any action. Yes. Thank you.